<laughs> anyway, welcome everyone. This is uh, my little podcast with my little friends, right? So you're uh, friends. been on the show before. Yes, I have. Louise, Mikhail. Hello. Anything to the crowd to do bailers and stuff? No, actually, no, no. You sure? Yeah. You didn't no, answer I, quick. No, no I, well, I wasn't. No, I wasn't sure what you were going to say, but no, I'd love to. Do they have loads of money? They have loads of money. They have loads of money. And then <laughs> Fiona. Fiona. Chong. Fat Ona sitting right here. Fat Ona. <laughs> well, um, the two girls have a podcast though, and I've listened to two, and they're very, very good. Thank you. Thank very you. good. Thank you. And I said, Woo-hoo. when you came onto my podcast the last time, yes. and we chatted, yes. and we chatted off air as well. Yeah. And I was there thinking, oh, it's more females like that should be getting their story out. Instead of the airy fairy stuff that we seem to be hearing all the time. That life is woo. Yay. Oh yeah. Good vibes. Yeah. Good vibes. Like <laughs> you were saying, there's no such good vibes all the time. No, definitely not. And tell me this, Louise. Are you a potato farmer? I'm not a potato farmer, but I do. I we sold potatoes for years. My parents have a fruit and vegetable shop in Balna. So I would have bagged potatoes and sold potatoes. I know a lot about potatoes. So actually. why were you bagging potatoes? Because like you get the potatoes in in like big 20 kg bags or whatever. They would have been in like four stone bags or something like that back in the day. And you have to like, you'd sell them in like 2.5 kgs or 5 kgs, people, 10 kgs. And you have to weigh them out. So they is, only is come that, in big. Is that the equivalent of going into Tesco and buying 12 pack and selling them singly? Uh, no. Ah. No. 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 <laughs> That's how you make money, boys. That's how you make money. But sure, like if they only came in twenty kg bags, who's going to want to buy them? Like, where was this shop? This was shop was in Balna. Is it still oh, open? It's, it's still open. Yeah. Give it a shout out there. Uh, Falcon Fruits in <laughs> Balna for you know lovely fresh fruit and veg and shop local. Falcon. Falcon, yeah, because I'm from Mount Falcon. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It's good, isn't it? That's good. It is good. Uh, People used to come in and uh, say, how are you, Mrs. Falcon? It's like, oh, that would have been a cool surname. That actually. would be a cool that surname. Would, yeah, yeah, that is Wouldn't a cool. It? Yeah, yeah, that's a badass surname. It is, yeah. So yeah. you grew up in Balna. I grew up Family in of? A family of, th- well, there's five of us, including my parents, so there's three kids. And you are the middle child. I am the middle child. you're a good, good listener, David. Well, I was very listening good, to the podcast. Yeah, very good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. my research. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't fucking around. It looks like I fuck around, yeah. but I don't fuck around. But um, so what I find interesting is of your story, and I, I want everyone to go listen to this podcast, and especially if you're a female, I think that it gives great insights into how really females are dealing with the world that they're in. And you, you ended up in a similar situation but totally different upbringings. So mm-hmm. Fiona, that was on my podcast before, you had a, let's be honest, it was fucking shit. Yeah, it was a shit show to be it, fair. It, it was horrible. Was, yeah. And you had a perfectly normal, loving upbringing. Yeah, it was great actually. And that's, that's and the intriguing thing about us. Yeah. You were successful yeah. in college and in school and you got good jobs mm-hmm. and your head's fucked up. Yep, pretty much. A- and you end up meeting each other. Well, we had met each, we yeah. had worked in our first lab job together. So we knew each other back then. And mm-hmm. then we kind of went our separate ways because I left, I went, moved to Athlone and then you left and did your TEFL course and went to yeah. Thailand and stuff. And um, then we reconnected uh, maybe like last year. Yeah, I think this, it was. this month, probably around this time last year, actually. Yeah. And uh we got chatting and we went met for like tea mm-hmm. and we started talking. Of course you did. Of Chinese. Course, yeah, 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 tea. Yeah. 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 I, had, I had an Irish coffee. I'm, jo- <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, yeah. So we met up and it turns out that although we had gone our separate ways, we actually ended up coming to similar realizations within ourselves yeah. because like both of our minds basically took over and we ended up having a difficult time just because of the way we were dealing things and the way we were looking at life. And I think an awful lot of people do that. They uh, mm-hmm. When you say a difficult time, mm. so explain for the listeners at home how you ended up in a difficult time or what you would describe as your difficult time. Okay, so for me, um, my difficult time um, was probably the main root of it was stress related to work. You were the problem. I was the problem, yeah. Well, I, I didn't you. I didn't realize that now at the time. I would have thought, you know, it was the toxic lab environment and So what was your job? So you you came out of college, you got your job. 
We'll start with Louise. Yeah. I, in the lab. In a lab. I was a microbiologist. So uh, basically testing stuff for bacteria and that. Uh, like, well, So are you sitting there all day, like just, uh, you know, just um, repetitively uh, testing uh, stuff? Uh, no. Well, well, we'd be doing a, there's so many different microbiology tests. You could be at a variety of different things throughout the day, which we were in our first yeah. lab job, which was actually, although it was, Manic, it was great because we had got a ridiculous amount of experience in a very short period mm -hmm. of time because yeah. we were doing 20,000 things we a were. day. You were or flying in out of the rooms yeah. up and down the hall. And like, or Fiona you didn't have time to pee. <laughs> she, got, she had kidney trouble ever since. <laughs> and was it a stressful <laughs> it job? So like, where did all the stress come from? Um, it was, there was more pressure rather than stress there is what I'd say. Pressure of it, work. Uh, pressure as in with the load of work. Like it mm -hmm. was different. Like, and there is like, there's this, I think there's a difference between like pressure and stress because pressure, you're super busy, but you might be, you know, it's not really affecting you outside of work and, you know, you're mentally capable to do it. So then as time went on, then I moved on and I ended up moving up the ranks, which I didn't never wanted to do. I was perfectly happy to go into work, to do my job and to come home and to live my life that way. And I always said that I just want to go in, go home, do well while I'm there and go home because mm. I really enjoyed my life outside of work. Mm. And uh, then as I moved up, which like, as I say, I didn't want it, um, but I was told to go for this and I was told to be frowned mm. upon if you don't go. More money. It was, but not, not not enough, David, though. Not enough. And I ended up having to do it without the extra money for months before it actually kicked in. So I was in the role like really early and I was doing all this extra stuff for not as much money, which kind of annoyed me as well, well which is understandable. Yeah. But then like there is a lot of pressure in pharmaceuticals. Anyway, if you talk to anybody mm. working in the labs, they'll tell you there's a lot of pressure there. It's just... You know, when you're dealing with stuff like that, um, that's uh, for, I suppose, human consumption yeah. or medical stuff. And, you know, there's a, people want it and they want it now. Mm -hmm. And with within the micro lab, if something happens, you have to put a stop to it. You have to halt product. And obviously, someone wants it now and you're saying you can't have it. You know, there's a... This so th th that goes on you. Why, why, why? Or um, the, well, there's a, there, we would be telling them why, because we would find out why, like there might be a reason and you might have to just put a halt on something for a while. To be honest, like you wouldn't, wouldn't even be that long a day or a couple of days and you do your investigation and you sort things out. Like at the end of the day, most of the stuff that I've been dealing with, with micro, it would have been, uh, there would be like a final like sterilization process. So even though you might have found something, it probably wasn't going to be a big deal in the end anyway, but you still have to investigate. You still have to put the, put the halt on it. And I suppose that will be why people would have an issue as well with the halt and things when it's not mm. a final product issue. You know what I mean? So that's just, that's actually kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent there because it's not no, really. But, right, but, but that's the kind of stress. The, that's the kind of thing that was kind of pressurized. Uh, and you were bringing that home. Um, well, really and truly it was the workload as well. Like the workload was intense. Like, um, there wasn't enough, um, cover. The workload was really intense. I was waiting in work, oh, maybe like 12 hour days. And like, that's like a long time. I actually. What age were you when? I was, oh, I was maybe 30. I was in my thirties anyway. I was 30, 31, I'd say, in or around that. Why age you? 37. Fuck off. Yeah. She looks like a child. <laughs> <laughs> Until I smile and then you see the, you see the lines and the wrinkles. Did you come up with something in the lab? Yeah. Well, it's all that boat. <laughs> it's all that boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Stick this near your mouth there. Yeah, sorry. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would have spent... Um, an awful lot of time when work actually in within one year, I had um, worked enough overtime that would have been the equivalent of two years of holidays. Wow. <laughs> Which is insane. Um, and that was... Were you the type of person that took it all personally and you, you yes. just stayed? Yeah. And I put too much pressure on myself. Like... You wanted to me. perform really I, well all the time. That's it. And, and took it personally. And took it personally. And because I felt I had to do a good job and that was pressure from me. Like it wasn't, you know, we were busy. I 
so other people would be like in the same job or whatever and they'd just still go home at five o'clock and be like, oh, it's never going to get done. The work's never going to be and done. That's the way it is. good friends in there to talk about? Oh yeah, way. I had. And some of them were doing the exact same thing as me. Not them all, but some of them were doing the same thing Was as it me. male dominated? No, uh, mm-hmm. very little males actually in micro. It's more of a female domina- dominated um, and stress, environment. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say that was stress. Uh, was your bosses stre- women? Um, w- one was a woman and um, one was a, a male. Who did you prefer working under? To be honest, I actually loved working under both of them because I got on incredibly well with both of them. Um, we actually used to have really good crack they were really nice. Everyone that I had worked with there was really nice. Um, so it wasn't like, it wasn't a personal issue with anybody. It was all an issue with the workload. It was an issue with the environment and it was an issue, most importantly, with myself and my inability to say no, mm-hmm. my inability like to just leave things behind. And it got to the stage where I was spent so much time in work that my health started to suffer. I used to have grey crack in the house with the girls that I was living with at the time, to the point that we were known as the house in the estate with all the laughing. They were like, what are they always laughing about? Uh, Yeah. yeah. Actually, someone said it to my housemate at the time, not realising it was her house, uh, because they work in the same place. They're like, there's these absolute nutters who spend their time (laughs) laughing. (laughs) Neighbours, and it turns out it was actually us. And I'm then, because of the fact that I ended up working so much, I ended up missing out on all that. And did everyone and crack kind of fall out with you? No, 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 they didn't. They didn't, but they didn't fall out with me, no. But I just, my life suffered. In, so what happened that you wise. went, fuck this, I'm, I'm out here? I, um, I got like this what mystery illness. Uh, I had like loads of swelling and extreme exhaustion. I was so tired. I couldn't keep my eyes open and, and my voice got really hoarse. It was real sexy though. So it was nice. And um, <laughs> yeah. I'm very sexy. <laughs> not, 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 not that sexy. No. Watch me wake up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I got, I got ill. And uh, got uh, like every test done under the sun and uh, like my inflammatory markers were up. So it was like some sort of an infection, uh, but they couldn't figure out what it was. And then they were drawing out things. Could it be possibly be related to stress? Are you stressed? No, no, well, I'm definitely not stressed. No, no, I can handle my stuff because, you know, stress, I would have considered, Louise, if you're stressed, you can't handle it. That's your problem. Mm. You know what I mean? You're weak if you're stressed. Um, but she thought it was just a crazy attitude. That was my own interpretation of something and it was a load of crap. So, so. When, how did you figure that it was the job? How did I figure it? Well, everybody around me was telling me it was a job as well. And you just wouldn't listen. And I just wouldn't listen because I felt that I would eventually get a handle on it. I would eventually, if the more time I put in, I would eventually get a handle on it. And I just never did. And it got to the stage where like everything else was just sacrificed, like friendships, like my diet, everything, exercise, all the good, nice things that I could have, I had in my life were just didn't have them anymore. Disappearing. Disappearing. And like, um, you know, if everything in your life is gone and all you're doing is working and you're exhausted, you know, your body is going to tell you to feck off in a big way. And, and it did, it took a long time for me to get well, I suppose right. if you're after working your whole life in an industry and you want to make it, you want to make it worthwhile, it's hard to say, oh, fuck this, I'm not going to do it anymore. I don't know if it's that I want, I never really wanted to make it. I see what you're saying, you want to make, it's like, I just, I suppose I didn't want to be seen as a quitter rather than I wanted to, because I, I never really had these. You smoke. No. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always work. No. <laughs> yeah, I just, I guess I, I never wanted to go to the top of the food chain. Like I never yeah. wanted to be, like I never saw myself as CEO making all these things. It wasn't things. money or it financially wasn't, driven. M- no, not at all. I just wanted to be doing something that I liked and that I didn't hate myself going in and out every day, you know? I just wanted to be able to, you know, lead a nice life and have lots of quality time. And <laughs> the exact opposite happened and it was my own doing. So um, then I just, after that period of time when I was sick and I was like, what on earth? Why am I doing this to myself? Like, 
what's life all about really at the end of the day? What is it about? Like, what am I here for? I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm not here to be wrecked and exhausted and sick all of the time. Surely to God, there's something nicer I could be doing. Even if it's, you know, I don't know, I'd like I ended up working for my parents for a while, which was great um, in their fruit and vegetable business. But definitely the attitude of some people in this country is <laughs> to leave a job that is considered better is a disgrace. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, that wouldn't have come from my family. They were incredibly supportive and would have been actually encouraged me to do it. But I was definitely, you know, when you're meeting different people all the time and they'd be mm -hmm. asking me in the shop why I had uh, why I had left or whatever. And I'm saying, oh, it wasn't for me. And one woman in particular was like, oh my God, I would kill my daughter if she did that. And I was like, Think I didn't say anything to her at the time, but I thought, my God, your poor daughter, like if that what's more important here is like her, her health or just the fact that she is doing like, you know, oh. and then to say my daughter has a good job doesn't matter, you yeah. know, what else is going on for her. I know. But some people grow up in a time of absolute want and need mm. and with no aspirations or way of getting those jobs so they look at them as if oh my god imagine if I had had that when I was younger or they want that for their kids you know yeah. the way everyone goes on yeah. so they don't, yeah. I wouldn't think she was personally attacking you or maybe yeah. she was maybe she was no, a cunt no no she wasn't she's actually, she's actually she wasn't and she's actually she is actually a nice lady but uh, just at the time I was like okay it's just I suppose that like that the different view on the on the situation because you know everybody thinks that to have this job and have all this money is what life is all about. But it's not what life is all about at all. It's mm. I am mm. far more content where I am now. I may have far less money, but I wouldn't trade for the world. Yeah. And, and I'd say there's an awful lot of people who would, would there's an awful lot of people who think want that. Like mm. if, if I see things from a point of view of, no, I think you're right. Mm. And I would love if that was the case. But can you imagine the amount of, women and men that are in jobs they hate but they have to do them because they have kids you know they have people that count on them and they mm -hmm. can't leave mm -hmm. they have to do it like is there a way of just you have to find a way of living through it as well oh for sure David and you see that was the thing like with me now looking back on it and with all the work I've done on myself afterwards I realised that it was me that was the issue and not the in, not necessarily yeah. the place and the environment. So if you could go back now, if I could go back now, I think do, I think? would be a different. Oh, I'd be a completely different person. I wouldn't do what I what I did then. Definitely not. Because I <laughs> would you be able to just shut it off? You'd still be just doing your thing during the day, but you'd shut off. Well, you know, I'd like to think I would. I guess it. it I think there is part of us that tends to revert back to who we were if we go back to a certain situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, although I'd have very high hopes that I would bring all of my new knowledge and all the stuff to the situation, I, I you know, I don't know. I think we're actually built that our brains are wired to go back. Yeah. You know, when you're put back somewhere. That I, yeah. yeah, you revert to old habits. I'd revert to old habits. Yeah. And I, you know, so I'd like to think I'd be okay, but you know. But you never know. You never know. Even in those environments, though, those high pressure environments, you put the, you will just automatically put that pressure on yourself to perform well because you don't want to like let the team down. You don't want to let other people down. You don't mm. want to let yourself down. And like going back to like saying, you know, when people were saying to you, oh, why would you leave that job? Like a hundred percent, I a hundred percent believe that there's job snobbery out there. And it's, it's so sad. When you left your job, the same yeah. thing, you, you just had enough of it yeah. and you thought it was more to life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you fucked off to Thailand. I did. So, I, <laughs> like, so you're you're sit, you go home, you leave, you just walk out, you go fuck this shit. Had you talked to each other in the middle of this? A couple of times on Facebook, like because we were Facebook mm -hmm. friends, so every yeah. now and again, and any, <laughs> friends, anytime, friends. Fiona, anytime Fiona yeah. would like post something, I'd be liking it, yeah, and, like commenting on different things or whatever. But other than that, we weren't text. We met for a coffee a couple of times we did, before yeah. you left for Thailand. Yeah, but then we didn't see each other for years. No, I was out gallivanting about. But again, when I left, because uh, I had gotten that job down in Cork. And that was like great money and I was moving up the ladder. And then I was like, fuck this, I'm going to Thailand. Everybody was like, why Thailand? What are you doing? It was just... Lady boys. Lo I love the lady boys. <laughs> <laughs> why Thailand though? Just, it just... was just random. It was, it was, um, they, I was online and I saw that they had an eye to eye TEFL course. What's that? Um, so it's like teaching English abroad oh. and it's just an organization. And I was just like, yep, I'll do that. Click, gone. 
you know. That was it? It was, I just made On your own? Visit. No, I went with um, an ex of mine at the time. But I loved it. I loved going abroad. Was I he one of your good boy friends or the bad ones? It's one of the superstar ones. <laughs> 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 Louise knows all about it. But yeah, it was, it was not a good one. <laughs> we'll see. What, Which what they that? talk about on the podcast. So if you want to hear all those stories, she was mad into yeah. lovely yeah. fellas. Superstars. Superstars, Superstars yeah. Love a bit of narcissism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was it narcissists you were into? Oh yeah, oh yeah. How do you find Please, them? Like, I just, just be, be a people pleaser. And um, don't value yourself. And just don't think you're worth anything. And you'd be so easily to manipulate. Like I was, I wanted love and validation and affection so much because I couldn't give it to myself. So I was seeking it externally. And then what, you know, I suppose not everyone's a narcissist. You know, someone may have narcissistic tendencies, but they may not actually be a narcissist. So I think there's only 1% of the population, but someone could be highly insecure, so insecure in themselves that they do have very strong narcissistic tendencies and they will seek out someone who will offer them validation. Were they, were they narcissists or did they go on like that when they first met you or did they just, was it death by little cuts? Like little, like little away cuts, with this, it like, was little cuts. So it's like, like there's this phase where they call a love bombing phase and you know, they, that oh, you would definitely love bomb. Oh, What's a love yeah. bomb? Extreme, oh, yeah. uh, girls, tell me what a love bomb is. <laughs> I want to know. David, your class, we're going to bring you loads of flowers. We're going to do, bring yeah. you out for dinner. We're going to text amazing. you every day and tell you how classy you are. Mm, they just feed your ego. They make you feel so loved and wanted. They sweep you off your feet. They're the perfect person and they think you're perfect and everything's going to be this fairy tale. Like, you know. You were saying you were always the breadwinner as well. I was. I was. Um, how do you find them? <laughs> like, I, 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 how do you find them initially? If you have zero confidence. They, it, that, Go on that's to Tinder just, and just tick narcissist. And you weren't doing that on Tinder, were <laughs> <by> you? <laughs> no, uh, no, I have. It's, it's <laughs> on your description. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be love bombed. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be like treated like crap. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just, I don't know how you, how anyone find because okay. women pick men. Like you, yes. you pick them. Yeah, but like there's this other thing where, you know, we're also told to be like, oh, I can make my own money and you're strong and, you know, break down the gender stereotypes. Why should the man be making the money? You can make the money. Did he say that? Um, there was a lot of like, we'll say, gender equality question, like Out the door! <laughs> <laughs> loser! <laughs> <laughs> Any man that says that is a fucking loser. I like now I know, but like I was in my <laughs> early twenties, like I didn't know back then. So yeah, it, that like that was tough going. I think um, when did you pay for his flight to Thailand? No, no, did, did, no. Did he want to go to Thailand more than you? I actually don't remember that. Say yes, I think it was lady boy. Say yes, say yes, <laughs> lady, <laughs> lady boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> you took that dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! How long? How long did you stay in <laughs> that relationship? It was seven years in Thailand. Oh no, no, no! I was in one. I was in Thailand for three years. All right. Yeah, yeah. Would you stay with him for seven years? Yeah. Came yeah. home from Thailand. The seven year itch. Yeah, it was oh, seven year itch. Yeah. Mm. You went to Thailand to find yourself with someone. Yeah, like. Now I ask these questions as a man that's never been anywhere. I am a fucking mountain man, right? I'm just trying to figure stuff out as I go You've here. You've never so. left Ireland. I know I have. Okay. But like holding hands with my wife and she doing everything for me. <laughs> I was never on a bus. You were never. Or a train. What? Not in this country, no. You've never been on a bus or a train? Like you've never been on bus air? <laughs> no, I've been on a bus, say, going to a stag or like going from the airport somewhere, but I've never actually stood at a bus stop and went somewhere or went to a train station and went, I don't know, was a car. We'll bring you up to Dublin and you'll have a day out. I'm afraid of <laughs> yeah. trains. Why? Because David, you stay sit out. here, stranger, like this, staring at you, <laughs> staring across from you with a stranger. No, it's, it's maybe they just like the lucky if they're staring at you like Nobody that. likes yeah. looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was just there thinking I'm after arriving to this podcast, just after left work, came home, the old clothes. I'm such a dick. That's way too harsh. When, 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 when you I came know, home. I about self-deprecation. I know. When you mm-hmm. came home though, mm-hmm. did you have an idea 
So how did you go, right now, this is, how do I make my life better by changing my thoughts? Oh, it took a while for me to get there. Like that was, like that's only been in the last maybe, what, three years where I've, you know, had to change my thoughts. Therapy. But therapy. Therapy was a huge one. Um, taking, it all started with, we'll say, the disordered eating. I wanted to get better because I had it in my head that at some point um, I want to be a mom, possibly. And if I was to go down that route, then I'd have to be a good role model because I didn't want the same thing to happen to me. And then I was like, okay, well, if you're going to be a mother, you have to like be a good role model and and like get a grip over yourself because you can't pass these negative traits about yourself and these negative behaviors and coping mechanisms onto another person. And um, so then I was like, okay, well, the first thing that needs to go is the disordered eating because I don't want to bring up, if I have girls or boys, I don't want to bring them up with this, with disordered eating. Are you so, too much or too little? Too little. Too little. Too little, yeah. And um, listen to episode four, all about a 17 day <laughs> diet. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was it? The 17 day diet. Yeah. 17 days. <laughs> yeah, I, that was the longest <laughs> I went without food. You didn't eat for 17 days? Yep. 17? 17 days. What did, like, I just, water? Water. Water, yep. How uh, did you not die? I mean, you're not going to die if you don't eat. I'd die. For, like, no, you wouldn't actually. Eight die. hours dead. <laughs> yeah, I, wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to function. I think I'd be really stupid. Like I wouldn't be able to function. My mind would work. I you must have been sick. You know, Were you really sick after that? I was really, I was tired and fatigued, but, you know, I was so out of my body and in my mind that you just kind of powered through because... You know, what did your you, friends you say? Or? I hate sorry, it. You're sorry, looking real well. You're talking so slim. over the mic. Here. Yeah. There we go. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and these are professionals. They're doing them all the time. I know. <laughs> he has to tell me every week. Seven, <laughs> yeah, so 17 mic. days, you were really tired. Yeah. But like I also, like in some ways, I also felt uh, fine because I was proud of myself. Yeah, you'd have like that, like you'd be delighted yeah, with yourself. You're, you're doing so yeah. well. And if you Did you do it as well? Enough, well? No, I didn't do the 17 day <laughs> diet. No, but I had, to, I definitely had disordered eating too. Yeah, for years. Yeah. Definitely. Is, is it a control thing? Are you just trying to control stuff? Um, I just wanted to be skinny, David. That's it. I just wanted to be skinny because everyone yeah. tells you if you're skinny, you know, you look great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there is. All there I'm is saying is Lizzo. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she wasn't around back then. Though. What's she know? She wasn't around. I remember going no. to a Beyonce concert or the Destiny's Child and all the girls did was talk about how massive Beyonce's thighs were and like, you look at the state of her and I was like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. She's the most beautiful woman mm. in the world. She's the biggest fraud. What? Beyonce is the biggest fraud ever. What? I don't Another one it. of those fucking stupid role models that women have. <laughs> All the single ladies put a ring on a strong, independent woman. What does she marry? A man that makes more money than her. What does he do? <laughs> he fucks around on her. What does she do? Stays with him. Uh, very valid point. Very valid point. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't argue with you. I don't make. I it doesn't make any you. sense. Yeah, I can't argue with you. My God. Yeah. You poor devils. So, yeah. <laughs> so, right. Did that not make it go, right, I need to see therapy or I need, what? Well. Uh, no, well, because my mind was so messed up at the time, I was really proud of the fact that I didn't eat for 17 days. And, you know, I got really upset when I was like, I'm going to have to like break the fast. I'm going to have to eat something. Um, and like, I was so upset for eating something and like I always yo yo diet like and you, you know when you lose weight you feel really proud and you're on this high and it kind of like reinforces like you think it's good behavior and it, 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 it like there's a positive feedback loop because other people are telling you like oh, have you lost weight you look great you look amazing and um my family you know we've, we've spoke about this before where it doesn't like they don't want you to have brains or personality you need to look good like if That's you want to the, be loved in your culture, yeah, it's huge. Like if you want to be loved, you need to look good. If you don't look good, then you're not worth it. So I had tied my own self worth to my self image, which then only created, we'll say, disordered eating. I reinforced that disordered eating. My mother would have reinforced that disordered eating as well, because you know if I eat something, she'd be like you sure you want to eat that or you know oh look there's fat piggy fiona going at it again and you know she's you know she tell you not to eat that um and that that started from like before i went into my teens so i'd say about 
10 to 12 around that time, I, I started restrictive eating at home. And like, that would be something that my mom would have reinforced. Because for her, self-image was so important. You know, you had to look skinny. If you don't look skinny, then you're not going to get attention. You're not going to get praise. You're not going to get love. And it was it, it really, really messed up. But Our culture is getting like that now with, with, for women. Mm-hmm. For yeah. Us, so, yeah. But it's so weird in, in our culture now because it's like, you know, big is beautiful and then skinny. Like it, it's kind of... It's kind of turned a little bit. Yeah, I know it has just a, a certain narrative in media, but it's not. You yeah, still look I, at the magazines; they're still the same. They're still glossy, mm. glossy magazines. Yeah, I always said that those glossy magazines are there to make you feel bad. Yeah, and that's I it. there's a thing I used to do. It's called a vision board to help like reinforce me wanting to be skinny to you like not me. not <laughs> let me eat food. Is I would like cut like get these magazines. I like, cut out the models. And I'd stick them onto like, like Kate a, Moss. Yeah, like Kate Moss. Head on. Yeah. I, no, I wouldn't put my head on it. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> if you're hungry, you just sit in front of it and you'd be like, I'd like, I'd like to look like that so someone will love me. Nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Oh, that's so terrible. So terrible. And it's so wrong because Oh, it's complete. Um, it's so wrong bullshit. because like, there's they've never obviously eaten food. They think that yeah, they've never had butter. <laughs> butter you went straight to butter yeah I know I was thinking the same David what's wrong with her what like things fried in butter it's the best thing. Box yeah fair fried enough in butter. things fried in butter the next but you know go, go to now I know you don't like curry I know you don't like curry anyway that's Indian <laughs> yeah, yeah. well age, like, curry ah, don't be taking curry from the Indians is that a war I'll have rice <laughs> what is your favourite food by the way ooh it's a very difficult question that is such a difficult question Question. I like Japanese food. I like Spanish tapas. <laughs> I don't even know what tapas is. <laughs> it's like Spanish small food. little bites. Yeah. Like, like I just love flavor. I actually really enjoy food. I do love food. It's it's the, the, the guilt with the food that... You still, do you still have guilt? Um, Not as much as I do now, but it's always... I, it's something that I have to be conscious of and work on. Back to Louise. Yeah. <laughs> you have to blow my mind there. <laughs> right? The whole vision board. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> yeah. Right. So did you go to therapy? Did I go to therapy? Or did I you did. find a different way of doing it? Um, I went to therapy, yeah. I went to therapy. I went to like, a, well, counselling, yeah. And I, then I just did a regular talk therapy um, first. And um, Was this after you said... Um, this was it, it, what the my t- health is, I don't yeah. know what it is that's wrong with me it, the therapy was actually for a separate issue the therapy I went to was because I'd had a bad relationship and I ended up going to therapy to deal with that so that actually happened the therapy happened kind of prior to the extreme stress but kind of nearly around it kind of coincided I think and I <laughs> I think it all it like opened up the can of the worms around the time when the stress was just kicking off mm-hmm. and it's like a, like a, like a match and it just made everything so much worse at the time. Um, now, Were I th- living at home? Uh, no. No, I wasn't living at home, no. Uh, no. Uh, but I think that um, it was just, you see, the talk, talking is incredibly good and incredibly helpful for some people. But mm-hmm. for me at the time, it wasn't because I just brought up stuff that I hadn't, that I had buried deep inside and I didn't want to talk about for years. And then I brought it up and then it was like, okay, good luck. And didn't go, it didn't do anything with it. Would it be, a rel- would, it, would you be bringing up stuff that you didn't think had any relevance to anything that you were dealing with at the time? Um, well, you would be asked questions. Yeah. The, like, like what? The, about your family life and about growing up and. And um, what were your parents like and all those kind of things. They ask you all that kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't have any issues there. You know, that wasn't. Uh, so would you be there thinking, oh, this is a little shy. Um, to be honest, the first time I went, I was very, it didn't, I didn't want to go, but I got to the stage where I kind of knew I had to go because I, I'd end up having like a bit of a panic attack in a situation with at my friend's house with this, with this fella with him be there. And after that situation, I was like, okay, I need to sort myself out because this is not normal. Wait, okay. What did you do? I, I, <laughs> bad cop, bad cop. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually, I didn't do anything. I, th- that's the thing. I didn't do anything, but he was putting moves on me and it made me feel uncomfortable. And, um, I had issues around fellas because of the bad relationship that I was in. And 
um, because I was in a situation that I didn't feel I had control, I lost it. And I ended up like have like lots of tears. And I actually left the house <laughs> and walked back into town in the middle of the night and slept in my car. Fuck off. Oh, Louise. <laughs> yeah, really Aww. bad. Re- oh, and everyone crazy. was there in the house. What the fuck is it wrong was, It her? wasn't until, yeah, it wasn't until the next day. My friend rang me and she was like, what? On, she's like, where, on, where are you? Where are you gone? And I was like, oh, I had to, I just had to leave. I just had to go or whatever. And she came to pick me up and she was sitting in the car and she was like looking at me and she was like, what, what, what is this? Like, what on earth is going on? What's happening to you? And I was like, uh, Oh, I think I need to go to talk to somebody about this. This is uh, this is a bit weird, isn't it? She was like, yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe you should. So that's how I ended up going to therapy in the first place. Yeah. But um, uh, as I say, didn't do an awful lot for me then, but brought up all the stuff. But I didn't, wasn't given tools at the time to manage it or wasn't. I wasn't like Is cognitive. that because you didn't go out for long enough? Or? Well oh no I went from I went the first t- day she's like oh you probably only need to be here for like a week and then she was like after like the at the end of the session she was like okay you need to come for a couple of months maybe so I was at it I was actually at it for months for months for the, with the same person with the same person but it was just a diff- you see it was the style that wasn't suitable for me what I needed was I needed cognitive behavioural therapy I needed mm. someone to look for me to look at situations from the lens of what I was doing to myself I didn't need like talking about things and putting them out there is not what I needed I needed someone to be look, to teach me wh- about my thoughts and how I although I was feeling I had all of these issues around this situation it was uh, it was me that was carrying it. It was me that was holding on to it. It was I was the root cause of this pain that I had right now. Although I might not have been the root cause of it initially, I was the root cause of what was going on right now. And I needed somebody to kind of go through that with me. And that's where the when I went and did a mindfulness course, it was like mindfulness based cognitive therapy. It wasn't straight CBT or cognitive therapy. And I was like, oh, my God, it clicked. I clicked. I was like. If I had known this years ago, I would have had a much uh, easier time in my 20s because I see that I am behind a lot of the stuff that's wrong with me because of the way that I was thinking about it. And I was, you know, holding on, um, holding on for life to these really bad situations. And like it was like years ago and it was still affecting me. Because were you, I was were you holding that, on to stuff hmm. that had happened in the past or a character that you were playing? I'm ho- um, holding on to stuff that had happened in the past. And I had a lot of, I think, I definitely had like these fears with um, getting into relationships again. And it wasn't necessarily because I thought all, because I didn't want to go near men necessarily. It was, I identified that it was because I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust that I wouldn't let myself stay in a situation that was not good for me because I had gotten, I think I found it so difficult to leave a certain situation. And that was my thing. I, because the people pleaser again. So was it the bad situation that manifested all this for you? It was probably, it was probably probably the, and to be honest, it was, that was probably it that kind of, tipped me over the edge. But I always had issues with anxiety and that since I was a kid. I just found it very difficult to deal with challenges, any sort of challenges, because it was just the way I used to, but I didn't realize at the time it was because of the way I used to think about situations. I didn't understand that. Um, so that's why everything in life felt like it was really hard for me. And the only reason was because of the way I looked at life. So... It sounded um, like your attachment style was anxious avoidant. Oh, it became anxious avoidant after yeah. the relationship. It was definitely, yeah. I was anxious at the time, but it became anxious avoidant like you for were, sure afterwards. Avoidant, avoidant like the plague. <laughs> so what, you'd avoid all situations like that? I used to avoid uh, situations like that, yeah. Well, not all situations. I had, as I said in episode three of The Odd Shift every now and again, but <laughs> um, would but, avoid um, relationships, yeah. That sort of... Uh, intimate contact and when you were talking in one of the podcasts about uh, I thought it was really interesting and you just alluded to it there 
um, you went to the therapist first, mm-hmm. but you were saying that some therapists, they just, it, they mightn't click with you. Yeah. You have to keep trying different ones. Exactly. And not even just different therapists, but different types of therapy. So like. So how do you know which? So what's the, if say someone's feeling down right now, is mm-hmm. there different kind of downs for different kind of therapies? Like, so if for what you were feeling and for what you were going through, are they two different therapists you have to look for? Like, how do you know what you're looking for? Say something like me, I wake up in the morning and go, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm stressed out to the max. I can't handle all this. Am I just, is a therapist a therapist? I think you need to try it out and yeah. see what works for you. Because for like every person is different. It's not one size fits all for everything. And like, mm-hmm. although the talk therapy didn't work for me, it works wonders for other people. Mm-hmm. And for some people, CBT, they don't like to have to look at their thoughts and they don't like to have to look at that sort of thing. So, you know. It's different. And there's like somatic therapy is what you did, which yeah. is the yeah. body the release. Body, yeah, but thing. like it's releasing trauma through the body. So like I would say if if you're down, if you're upset and you're looking for therapy, try, do trial and error, experiment until you find something that clicks. Because that's what I had to do. I went through maybe six different therapists before I found the the two that I have that really, really worked for me. Are you still with them? Yeah. Yeah. And is, is it true one of your therapists told you that you had the worst case of child yeah. abuse they'd ever seen? Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm still with, with, with that therapist. But it was like, I tried talk therapy as well. But what that did was it brought up all the emotions and it, I, it just came up, but I, I never got dealt with. It never got to be resolved or soothed. It just brought it up and then I'd leave the office feeling worse. How do you worse. resolve stuff that's happened? Um, different ways. Like yeah. the somatic is releasing it through the body. You did breath work. Mine was body movement. Then there is also, well, CBT worked very well for me, me because too. it was um, questioning your thoughts. As you have them. As you have them. Yeah, so, and, and about the stuff that has happened previously, about the stuff that's happened in the past as well. Yeah, well, so CB, so just say you have a thought now that's negative. Is this what is this what it is? So anytime you have a negative thought, you catch yourself thinking it. Well, you'd be absolutely mighty if you catch them all. But you do. Yeah, it, yeah that's it. Mm-hmm. If, if you're feeling down, I'd say if you are feeling low, you my the first thing I would say to do is to look at what you're thinking about what's going on inside your head because a lot of this stuff the reason we're feeling low is because it's generated within the mind and it's stories that we're telling ourselves and you know putting this pressure that we put on ourselves because of this we have these crazy expectations Mm -hmm. of ourselves and we hold ourselves to a ridiculously high standard that other people a lot of time don't hold ourselves to and we torture ourselves because of it Mm -hmm. so that's I think why CBT works because when you look and you can identify the thoughts and then you can realize that a lot of the time your thoughts are a lot of bullshit. They're crap. Everyone seems to think that their thoughts are facts, but they're not. Like the majority of what goes on in my head is Just baloney. Nice. Yeah. Baloney. Noise. Mm-hmm. Noise. And it's all stuff like random old stuff coming up. Like even if you have issues with your self-image, it's like we're having like constantly having the same types of thoughts all the time. It could mm-hmm. be like negative things about yourself that, you know. They're happening all the time. So you think they're true and they might be happening since you were a kid. You might be having the same negative thoughts about yourself. It doesn't, just because you're they're so happening all the time doesn't mean you true. You and Fiona, you had the fortitude to figure out, uh, I need help and I need to go see someone. What would you say to someone, male or female, that's listening to this, that they could be going through stuff or angry? How do they know when they need help? What's going on in their life or what would be happening? What would it be manifesting itself as in their lives, daily lives? I just think if you're just not content within mm-hmm. yourself, uh, it's worth your while to go and to talk to somebody. When you say content. I suppose we're... Because uh, like who's content? Hey, oh, oh, oh th- sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I thought you were calling me like, a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I thought Matt was doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Always yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what Matt thinks you need to do. Just release it. Just release it and you'll be good. You'll be fine. <laughs> but like what what would it be like? 
um, to, to be content if, if you're no, not like, content. I, like, who's content? Who's content? Well, yeah, I suppose. But you know, if, content is what we aspire for. Is what you aspire mm. for, yeah. So if it's a case that you're, I suppose, low and life feels incredibly difficult and everything just, you feel like the world is against you and, you know, you feel like you're miserable a lot of the time. And I suppose you, you just, I think. Do you not think yeah. people mostly suffer? I do. And to be honest, mm. that's, I think there's this, this crazy expectation that life is meant to be something other than suffering. Yeah. Cause that's all <laughs> because it is. It is life. It's is, how you handle it. Yeah. It's full yeah. of challenges and like it's through the challenges is that's where I've got the most of my learning through my mm. life. And if I didn't have those experiences, I would definitely wouldn't be who I am. But I think I wouldn't be able to handle those challenges that life throw at me now if I didn't realize and I didn't know what I know about my mind and I didn't I would have never gotten there mm. without the MBCT mindfulness based content. so mm. what's your other than that what what did you change your life to do what's your what did you replace your work and all that negative thinking with what did you what did you change what did I change um like you can't just go like I'm just gonna sit there and do CBT all day. And oh like, no 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 no! Of course not. And I'm not like I'm not exactly a pro. And there's no anybody that out there that claims to be a pro. And when it comes to this kind of mind stuff, it's <laughs> I don't think you can be. It's like it's a constant battle. But um, so what did I change? Like you uh, changed career. I changed career. Yeah, and I changed you're, you're career. Fetish now I hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's what Fiona said. Yeah. I'm only, if it's a lie, it's not a lie of mine. Yeah, no, I definitely don't have a foot fetish. I'm a, reflex, a, I'm a reflexologist and I used to get reflexology done while I was super stressed as well. And with I your used to with my mom and it was lovely and relaxing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I do that. And just, I'm trying to think what else I have changed in my, I think the once your, once your thinking changes though, your life changes. And you're yeah, in a relationship now again? I'm in a relationship now again. Totally yeah. different type of man. Oh, completely different. Yeah. And you shout know. out to the angel that saved her. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah no, he is great. And uh, yeah, we get on very well. Very different people, but we get on very well. And I, we balance each other out. Which I think is great. that's, that's uh, something seems to be what happens all the time. Yeah. The opposites attract. Yin and yang. Yeah. Because yeah. Vicky yeah. is nothing like me. <laughs> <laughs> she's real play. You know, she's proper. She's nice. She's friendly. And then there's me. <laughs> <laughs> but you need that you've balance. Been, you've been you friendly need, enough now that. so far. I don't. I, yeah. Ah, look, hey, nice yeah, guy. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah, I have yeah. no reason not to be yeah. friendly. Yeah. And yeah. You what did you change? You you went back to your job. I went back to my job. Yeah. Um, Sucker for punishment. I know that's it. Or you just enjoyed it? Well, I didn't actually go back into microbiology, but I went back into the life science industry and I tried out different things in there and. Uh, it uh, turns out that I, I do actually like engineering. Now, I'm not exactly doing engineering at the moment. I'm doing project management, which is new to me and it's completely different. And um, I I like to move about a lot and, and try new things and experiment to see what works and work, what doesn't work. Like I did that with therapy and that helped. And now in the life science industry, I'm, I'm figuring out what it is I like by crossing out the things that I don't like. And yeah, I, microbiology wasn't for me, but I will say in the life science industry, it is a very high pressure environment because of deadlines. And then these like corporations keep like selling you this narrative, like you're here to save lives. So you must like <laughs> give your life to this company <laughs> so other people can live. And then well, I'll give you a look. Every company wants you to give your life to them. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you're, what you're doing. Yeah. But you see, I think in life sciences, they're like this medical device can save this person's life and you're working directly. Have you with seen it. any cool ones? Medical devices? Yeah. Like, do you get to yeah. see any new yeah, fancy I built, ones? I built prototypes. Of as what? Well. Go on, uh, give, us a, like, give us a sneak peek. I have built prototypes of like um, different catheters with like special sensors in them. Um, that go into the machines that the doctors use? They go into the patient. Yeah. But yeah. they are put in with a little robot, aren't they? No, no, no. The, the, these these catheters are pointing directly into the patient. Um, but I've seen all sorts of different medical devices, pacemakers, um, sensors for to put into your brain. Um, like it, Elon Musk had. 
I don't know That's what, what he has. Thinking. Neuralink. Yeah, yeah. Nor, no, I'm going to be the be. first one to get. Oh, well, hopefully you won't eat it. Are they, are they supposed to be for people who are paralyzed and stuff? Yeah, you can get them too, but you can also... Like, <laughs> see, do you see this? We're all cyborgs, right? The Because we all have just all I the know. information to yeah. work. Yeah. We just don't have the bandwidth to, you know, because we have to use our thumbs. Would you imagine just thinking? Oh, I know oh, my, my mind is noisy enough. Why would oh, I want I to do that? Yeah, I don't think I'd want that. No. I, do you know the noise no. in my head soothes me? Does it? Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. I love loads of noise. Loads of noise. Yeah. Why? 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 Do you not like the silence? No. What don't you like? Mm-hmm. I don't like silence. If I go home and sometimes I'd be looking forward to going home, oh, there's no one here. I'm going to have a few minutes. I'm going to go to the toilet, maybe have a poop without a two year old knocking on the door or coming in. And I'm so excited. Next thing, after five minutes, I'm lonely and I want them all to come home. Oh. But like, well, why why aren't you able to be 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 with yourself? No, I am with myself. I'm with myself all the time. Like I'm in okay. a job. I'm a job. I have a job where I sit in a machine all day on my own. I'm mm. totally happy being on my own. And like I get to listen to podcasts, books, audio books, and it's the noise that keeps me focused on the repetitive nature of the job that I have to do. Mm. Yeah. So you know the way you're saying some, there's loads of people in a job that they hate, yeah, or yeah. they don't like. But they have to do it to support their family. Yeah. And we're lucky enough to live in a in an age where the technology is there that you can get through your day and actually learn something or actually um, experience something or listen to music or hear something you haven't seen before or listen to an amazing book and you can get through your day. So it's kind of your own kind of therapy just to get through the day because everyone's just trying to get through their day. And that's how I do it. Yeah. It's not very mindful, though. No, but I I don't even <laughs> I, was I, I know, but I do find mindfulness is it can be can't it be something for everyone? Oh, isn't, of course, isn't there a different yeah, yeah. mindfulness to Yeah, yeah. It doesn't necessarily you don't need to it's, be it's yeah. kinda of quieting in the mind. Yeah. So if I was listening to uh if you're focused on anything really like yeah. that and you're properly listening, then yeah. that's it, yeah, yeah, something, yeah. something like that. Yeah. But you see, if it's if you're doing another task at the same time. You're not really focused on the task because you're focused on what you're listening to. Just There's depends. some tasks. It's yeah, not yeah. microbiology what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you now. Yeah. Right. You're using the same functions all day long. Chopping down those Chopping trees. Chopping down those trees. So that we have these lovely tables and chairs. Yeah, lovely. And your podcast. Why did you think it was a good idea to do the podcast? And who is it for mainly, do you think? Well, Fiona asked me, so I'm going to let her. Um, it's your fault, David. That's I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah, Completely well, your fault. You know, you put the idea in my head. Even though I put the idea in your head, right? You must have known there was a reason that you should do it. Would oh, you imagine yeah. if you had heard your podcast four years ago? Yeah, it would. Well, I think for me, because uh, there is. Okay, so we spoke about this earlier. There, there's certain narratives out there in the media and within, uh, just in life. And I, I don't always agree with these narratives. And But I feel like my voice is actually smaller than the, the narrative that's being pushed out in, in, we'll say, mainstream media. What do you think the narrative is towards women? Towards women. Yeah. I think... Getting okay. stiff in my yeah. knee. I was across the wrong knee. <laughs> I think um, you could do with some reflexology. I, yeah. I can't let anyone touch my feet. Oh, really? I, I said it. the same thing to her as well. Uh, did you not get to do it yet? Well, not yet. No, not it, yet. It, it has to ah, for fuck's sake, yeah, girls. No, she didn't bring her wipes. Yeah. Well, that was the first day. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't even prepared to do a podcast. I have baby wipes in the room. car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, anyway, well, sorry. We no, no worries. No, but I, I think there is this, there's a narrative that I don't like for women where it's like, you have to have everything as mm. in you have to have this amazing career and you have to be able to, I don't know, you're not really a woman if, if you don't want motherhood. Um, you have you have to have a career. You have to have motherhood. You have to have friends. You have to have a fit body. Um, you know, you have to have the nice house. You mm-hmm. have to have you know a, a good husband. And like, there's so much pressure on women to be all of these things. And we said in one of the podcasts as well, like women put that pressure on other women. Mm. It's not necessarily men. 
I don't always think it's men that puts that pressure on, but it, it would be women. So like in my workplace, you know, if I, I didn't want to, like Louise, I didn't really want to go up the food chain. I was really, really content where, where I was within, we'll say engineering. I want to go in, do my job and then be able to go home and have my quality time. You know, I didn't want my life to, I didn't want my life to turn into, you know, I'm this career person and, and, and that's all I'm going to prioritize. But in industry, when you're doing like your performance reviews, they'll be like, if your manager is female, and this is from my experience, they're always telling you to go up, to go up the food chain, to move up the ladder, as if you being content with where you are isn't enough. Like, that's the thing. We don't live in a world anymore where things can be enough. You always have to want more, 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 go further, achieve more, aim higher. But like, it's like, well, where's, where's the line for enough? What is the high? How do you mean? What's your dream? So if I was to say to the two, I'm fucking not even doing the microphone now. <laughs> if I could give you anything you want in 10 years, where you are in life, what you have, what would it be? I wouldn't be much um, different to where I am now, I don't think. But I'd probably um, just be busier, um, probably be busier, uh, but d like to be doing the same things. Because I think my job, re I really enjoy my job now. Reflexology. Reflexology and the Foot mind. Finish. The, and the <laughs> and What's the, the name of your business? Mindfulness give, give, give and positive psychology there. coach. Um, just, it's just Louise McHale Wellness. It's what nothing it got to do with the ba Baylors, no. No, nothing got to do with the Baylors, no, no. <laughs> and <laughs> but you, you just want to be busier. Um, yeah, like because I really enjoy what I'm doing. Um, like get uh, just it's a really nice job, and I get a lot from the courses that I give as well. You know, I think people get a lot from them, and I suppose like I did back when I f was first introduced to it. So it's a real rewarding for me. Um, so I don't really, I don't know. It's a very difficult. I don't know where I'd, well, I don't, I, I can't actually say off the top of my head what I'd want because I don't particularly want anything. So do you not set goals for yourself? And um, Well, business wise, I suppose like that, it would be just to be busier. That would be my goal. <laughs> But other than that, not really. I don't I don't see world domination, you know, Louise McHale, guru, world domination <laughs> wasn't really on the agenda. <laughs> but, you know, if it happens, I'll... I'll <laughs> You're not going climbing any mountains or... <laughs> no, no, I leave that stuff to my brother. Zen monk Louise. Yeah. And yeah. Fiona, what about you? Um, more ten, peace. Ten kids. No, 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 no. Oh, you changed your mind about kids, so? No, I haven't changed, like... I'm on and off about it. Um, ten is a lot, though. No, not very. Yeah, ten, ten, ten is ten, a lot. Ten, ten, in, in the next ten years, she'd want to be. <laughs> she'd want yeah. to be pumping them out with a couple of twins in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, like it's it, it's like it's a, something that I go back and forth over. It, I, I find it very difficult as a woman to make my mind up on it, because you have people telling you, you know, you should have kids. It's it's you know it's. Uh, you're, you're born to have kids. And then you also have another voice saying, you know, you're an independent woman and why, why do you want to have kids? And nah, 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 nah. I, we've all yeah. learned, we've all established that you should never mind the good opinion of other people. You just yeah. go with whatever mm -hmm. yeah. you feel. And I'm still right you. Yeah, and I'm still figuring that out. I think I want to be 100% sure that I could be a good mom before I actually be a mom because kids are such a big responsibility and you can fuck them up really easily. Do like, you genuinely think people have themselves sorted before they have kids. I... <laughs> because nobody does. Yeah, I was going to say, you'll never be 100% yeah, sure yeah, never. Yeah. And on anything. Kids are a suck it and see kind of thing. I don't know. Like, I, my parents... I think. My parents had... Yeah, but you don't take have. your parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, I, I, I cancel that one out now. Yeah. And I've seen some of my aunts and uncles and how they behaved with my cousins and I'd just be like, ooh. But I you're just... different. You wouldn't behave that way because you've had a completely, mm. you know, you, you, you're a different person. And yeah, but like what if, all this knowledge. What but... if I go crazy? Like what if I, I go the too far in the other direction as and I a, like molly cuddle and, and, and they can never Yeah. Ugh, I no. think you're overthinking it. 
Yeah. yeah. Everyone has great aspirations when they have kids. I I, mm. I always watch people when they have their kids. Me and Vicky were the same. And I thought, oh, can't we? We're going to get this. <laughs> and this fucker comes out. <laughs> and it won't stop crying. Your life changes. And it's just horrible for a while. And then it just turns into the best thing ever. That's mm-hmm. just from my point of view. I'd love to have 20 kids. Only Vicky wouldn't let me. <laughs> but she's the one mind them. Yeah. And she's the one popping them out as well. She's the one popping them fairness. out. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't blame her. Yeah. But I, 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 I don't know what I do without my kids. They're the best thing ever. Yeah, they're gas now. They're, they are very, yeah. very cute now. Very in funny. Very funny. Mm-hmm. And they're so different. And that's why I, I worry about them. You know, I worry about them a lot because of the culture we're growing up in. Mm. Since I started this whole social media thing, it's so fucking fake. Mm. And it's so shit. And when I see my girls growing up and I know, say, as a parent, you're supposed to love your children. That's all you're you're supposed to do. You're Mm -hmm. supposed to love your children. But you're all supposed to give them tough love and you're supposed to protect them. And when I look at my young lad, and I look at my girls growing up, I can get away with spoiling my girls, right? Because it can go either way, mm. right? But I noticed that culturally, they're being told, I think not knowing lies. They're being told to aspire to have, like what she said, all these things yeah. and be all these things when it's just not attainable. Mm-hmm. And when I see my young lad, he's grown up in a world where he's been, I don't know what he's going to do when he gets older. He's grown up in a world where men are kind of hated. We're demonized. If you're aggressive, which you have to be in this world, if you want to get what you want to have, you're uh, toxic. Men have probably never been less aggressive. I, yeah, I, I, know. I, agree. Um, I could, agree. When you think about it over the years, if you go into any sort of historical site in Ireland and read the history and you're like, sweet Jesus, but thank men, God but, I wasn't like, but, but, but men had to be. Yeah. That back years ago, there was a lot of wolves at the door, and the doors oh, it was were all very wars weak. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all fighting and killing yeah. and maiming. So, like, yeah. I, I was watching The Last of Us the other night. Have you watched any of that? No, I no it's that. meant to be very good, though. And, like, every time I watch The Walking Dead or The Last of Us, anything with zombies and stuff, it's never, never the zombies that are scary, mm. it's the other people. Yeah. It's the other people that are always scary. That turn on each other. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and it looks so. You know that them dystopian programs where everything's nasty and that's how it was 500 years ago. Mm. Like that's what life was for everybody. Yeah, it was shit. It was shit. Yeah. And like, I, I just think that, I just worry, I think people, we overthink things and Definitely. In, in my life, I've noticed because I've, I've been on every end of it. From I, I've had stuff, I've lost everything, I've got stuff back and then I got stuff again and the only thing that matters is when I, Sit down, I'm doing nothing with my kids and with my wife and all the other stuff is bullshit. And when you see everyone just going chasing their tails and and I chase my tails with myself because I have responsibilities. Like I do it anyway. Like mm-hmm. I'm I'm on you're either on or you're off. You know, you have to get mm-hmm. stuff, you have to do stuff, and you have to keep going and going and going. But you just have to not overthink it. And when I I the reason that when I listened to your podcast, when I met you. You yeah. kind of talked on the phone, but I didn't know yeah. the whole story and it shocked me. Like it, it shocked me. And then when I was listening to the two of you doing the podcast and I was there, all right, there's, that's perfect. That's two sides of the coin. So it doesn't matter whether you have perfect upbringing or a nasty upbringing, you can still meet somewhere in the middle and get through it and get to the other side. But we all have to stop lying to each other yeah. and to yeah. ourselves. Because yeah. we do an awful lot of talking shit to ourselves. An insane, yeah. insane amount. And I think that's why the majority of people have so many problems. Yeah. Because they're filling themselves with crap all the time. And, and we, yeah. and the, like, I do, when you look at Instagram, do you have Instagram? I do, yeah. Does it not like, as a woman, when you're looking at all these things, it's, you're, like, have you watched all them videos lately of the women in the gym? I don't I've really seen. follow so, anything. So that you have all these women stuff. in the gym talking about, oh, this lad's st- staring at me. Oh, and this yeah. Lad. yeah. We're wearing nothing. <laughs> like they're wearing nothing. Yeah. Mm. And you're there thinking, I, I've so, I'm so confused where anyone's supposed to go from here. Like, yeah. I'm, like if I go, my youngest starts going to the gym, I go, right, listen, if you see a girl, put on blinkers, don't look, even though everything in your head is there, look, just mm. look. It's normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't do it. But if you're a young lad 
you're, you're fucking not going to think that and then your, your life could be over. The interesting fact as well is that the video that sparked that whole thing of why this becomes so big now, your one had an OnlyFans and everything. And she was like about how I feel unsafe in this environment and stuff. And she, 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 like, then you she had an OnlyFans. Yeah. But, but well, things like that minimize the real risks. No, because yeah. there's also women that do get attacked mm-hmm. and that there mm-hmm. is fucking nasty people out there. There's nasty everything out there. But if we, if we generalize everyone as a demon when they're not, it mm-hmm. gets very squirrely out there. Nobody knows how to conduct themselves. Yeah, I I'd imagine that it is very difficult as a young fella grown up now as to whether or not to afraid to approach anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To do anything in yeah. case it's misinterpreted. Well, I also think that the, the, the playing field is unbalanced at the moment because women can make very serious allegations about men. Mm-hmm. And women are seen more favorably than, mm. than the, and, man they're, is. and they're the serious end of it. But if you're a young lad and you're listening to social media and one half of it is, I'm an independent woman, I'll pay for half my own thing. When I guarantee you 90% of women want someone shiver, chivalrous. They want someone to treat him nice. They want someone to, how does any man know what he's supposed to do? Yeah. And you hear loads of people, like you could, so many women message me, I suppose because a married man is your brother single or th- that they have no friend or lads are just into pussy or fucking whatever. And I'm there thinking, sure, how is there so many single women out there? Because there's so many single lads. So if I'm getting loads of messages from lads that are single and so many messages from women that are single and no one's fucking with each other, it's because of this confusion that's going on. There's oh, confusion yeah. and it's, I don't know, I think there's so much, this is going to sound really controversial now, but there's so much choice now as well because of Tinder. Yeah. And I think it's something we weren't really faced with before because you go out in a bar and you might go up and might be, there's a select few people there and you go up and you have a conversation. Mm. Whereas now you could have, be chatting to four or five different people at the one time, depending on how much time you have in your hands. Yeah. Um, Mm. And then, so you get to be like, oh, I don't like this one now because he does this or I don't like this one. It's, and it's but like I select- think there's plenty of choice. Yeah. It's not the choice that's the problem. It's the getting from the first meetings to an actual relationship that mm. people have the problem with because of unreal expectations yeah. we set on ourselves. If if you ask um, most women, like you're not young ones now anymore, like you're not no. teenagers, but we want a lad that earns this much. We want him. What's, what's the phrase? Six six foot, six inches, six figures. <laughs> God. And yeah. and. You know, how, how much are you worth? I'm, I'm, I value myself. I'm worth what I'm worth. Lads can't go on like that. We can't say I'm worth what I'm worth. Or they can't, they can't yeah. either turn around and say, I want a woman with a size, whatever. Yeah, or, or we're yeah. misogynist. Or you're misogynist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lads don't yeah. have that because we're told very quick. Because when you go on a night out, we have to do the asking. Mm. And you're very quick to say, no. <laughs> Not <laughs> with you. Yeah. So women have True. all the choice. So it's a very, very difficult. If I was a guy, if I was single now in the morning, I don't know what I'd do. Over to Thailand to a lady by it. It would be the simplest thing. He'd be attractive. Would he? Yeah. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't tell. I seen something. I seen one on Facebook or it was YouTube or something. I swear to God, I thought it was a girl. Really the best pretty. best looking girl you've ever seen in your life. No. Yeah, honestly, when I was over there, there was times where I was just like. And then big dick. Men. Big dick. Yeah. Big cock and balls. Crazy. And is that with, um, do they get surgery to do yeah, like that or do they look like that? No, like, well, it depends on how far the lady boys want to go. I mean, they can get, get surgery to get rid of the cock and balls. The, the trans, it's a trans surgery. I think it's like male to female. That would be serious, wouldn't but it? But it's, yeah, it is. And like. You're taking a risk there now. Yeah. Aren't you? <laughs> you know, you're, ma- you're making a choice. Yeah. You know, you're going in, you go, doctor. I just, I've decided I want it gone. Mm. Fuck. Yeah. But girls, I really think your podcast is brilliant. And I really hope loads of people call watch it. And what do you call it? The flip. The, it's for the, it's the, just the, FLP. FLP. The Fiona <laughs> and Louise podcast. It's very original. Yeah. I thought it was like, the flip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the flip. <laughs> we have done that on occasion. Yeah. yeah. Are you yeah. enjoying doing it? Yeah. 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 It's fun. I like it. Yeah, it is fun. Yeah. But yeah I love talking shite. So. You have a good rapport with each, with each other. I wasn't mm-hmm. expecting you to be as fucking, you're a leer. What? You're always bullying her. <laughs> yeah. And I thought you'd be the quiet one. Yes, I'm glad, I'm glad you're saying it, David. No, yes. not just me. Yeah. 
Poor, yeah. poor devil. I know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm well able. I'm well you able are. to handle it. Yeah. You can take it. I'm well able. Yeah. So you have episode one and two done. Number yeah. three is out when? On Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday the 28th of February. Tuesday the 28th of February. Yeah. And I think that if you have anything to do, do that. Go watch it. Go listen to it. It's on YouTube. The first one is, and now they say it, I didn't put the second one up on YouTube, <laughs> but that will be done. That'll be up on YouTube. Hey, you were tonight. saying you want to be busier. I Get know, busy putting I it up know, on I YouTube. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. So oh, thanks yeah, a million for coming on. You came a long way. I didn't come too far now, but Fiona came. Leitrim. Yeah. Lovely Leitrim. Leitrim. Kildare. People in Leitrim hate me. Why? People in Leitrim don't hate Why? you. They do. Why? Oh, they Why? save Leitrim shy. <laughs> What's save Lee Trump They don't want any timber cut God. up there. Okay. Oh, well. Because they drag their arse off the ground instead of wiping it. <laughs> That's what they do. They, they, you know, they get the plastic bags out done stores and they fucking wipe their hole with that. <laughs> you know, they live in straw houses. <laughs> they they don't use any fucking timber. Fucking hate you yeah. Journey. So, yeah. I know, look, they're, they're all right. They did threaten to burn down my house and stuff. And what? What? They, there was some law being passed that we couldn't cut timber and we had to sign a petition and I'd done a video on my page to get people to sign the petition. And I was getting all these messages from guys that were going to knew where I lived and they were going to burn my house down. Oh my, my kids God, that's in. absolutely shocking. So you're just because you're cutting down trees, they've decided they're going to burn your yeah, house yeah, and kill yeah, your family. Yeah. One, one of the only sustainable wow. industries Sick. in wow. Ireland, you know, sustainable yeah. forest management yeah. is what we've done. Yeah, lunatics. Lunatics Absolute from Absolutely lunatics. Huh? And if I ever find out that you are in part of that, I'm going to, that's it, me and you are finished. My hand, my hands We're are done. Clean. My hands we are, clean. are done. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, Fiona, thanks very much for coming. Well, thanks for having yeah. us. Thank and you. And we'll put links on for the podcast and stuff. Lovely. Yeah, social mm. media stuff. Yeah. Mm. Good luck. Cheers. Bye-bye. Good night.